Good day everyone, my name is Lorena Rosalinda from BSB MM2 and I am one of the reporter of Module 6, Topic Leveraging Core Competencies for Corporate Diversification, Corporate Diversification and Firm Performance. So first, let's talk about leveraging core competencies for corporate diversification. When looking inside the firm, we introduce the idea that competitive advantage can be based on core competencies. Core competencies are unique strength invented deep within a firm. They allow companies to increase the perceived value of their product and service offerings or lower the cost to produce them. Example of core competencies is first, Walmart ability to effectively orchestrate a globally distributed supply chain at low cost. Second, Infosys, ability to provide high-quality information technology service at low cost by leveraging its global delivery model. This implies taking work to the location where it makes the best economic sense based on the available talent and the least amount of acceptable risk and lowest cost. So let's discuss um, brief information about Walmart. So, Walmart Corporation is an American multinational retail corporation that operates a chain of hypermarkets, discount department store, and grocery store from the United States. The company was founded by Sam Walton in 1962 and incorporated on October 31, 1969. It also owned and operates some club retail warehouse. As of January 31, 2021, Walmart has 11,443 stores and clubs in 27 countries, operating under 56 different names. Walmart is the world's largest company by revenue. According to the Fortune Global 500 list in 2020, it is also the largest private employer in the world with 2.2 million employees. It is publicity-traded family-owned business as the company is controlled by the Walton family, Sam Waltons here owned over 50% of Walmart through both their holding company, Walton Enterprises, and their individual holdings. Walmart was the largest United States grocery retailer in 2019. And also, Walmart was listed on the New York Stock Exchange in 1972 by 1988. It was the most profitable retailer in the U.S. and it had become the largest in terms of revenue. By October 1989, the company was original geographically limited to the South and Lowest Midwest, but it had stores from cost to cost by the early 1990s. So, our second example of core competencies is Infosys. So, let's discuss um, brief information about this. Infosys Limited is an Indian multinational technology company that provides business consulting, information technology, and outsourcing services. Infosys is the second largest Indian IT company after Tata Consultancy Services. By 2020 revenue figures in the 600 second largest public company in the world as per Forbes Global 2000 ranking. On 31 December 2020, its market capitalization was $71.92 billion. The company changed its name to Infosys Technology Private Limited in April 1992 and to Infosys Technology Limited when it became a public limited company in June 1992. It was renamed to Infosys Limited in June 2011. The share price surged to 8,100 equivalent to 28,000 or 390 US dollars in 2019 by 1999 making it the costless share on the market at that time. At that time, Infosys was among the 20 biggest companies by market capitalization on the Nasdaq or the National Association of Securities Dealers Automate Quotations. The ADR or Alternative Dispute Resolution listing was shifted from Nasdaq to Nice or New York Stock Exchange Euronex to give European investors better access to the company's shares. 
To survive and prosper, companies need to grow. This mantra holds especially true publicity-owned companies because they create shareholders' value through profitable growth. Managers respond to this relentless growth imperative by leveraging their existing core competencies to find future growth opportunities. Next, we have Core Competence Market Matrix, a framework to guide corporate diversification strategy by analyzing possible combinations of existing new core competencies and existing new markets as a way to guide managerial decision in regards to diversification strategies the first task for manager is to identify their existing core competencies and understand the firm's current market situations. When applying an existing or new dimension to core competencies and markets, four quadrants emerge, each with distinct strategic implications. So we have here a core competence market matrix illustration. So, the lower left quadrants combines existing core competence with existing market. So, the manager must come up with ideas on how to leverage existing core competencies to improve the firm's current market positions. For example, Bank of America is one of the largest banks in United States and has at least one customer in 50% of U.S. households. Some 20 years ago, Bank of America had been North Carolina National Bank or NCNB, a regional bank in North Carolina. One of NCNB's unique core competencies was identifying, appraising, and integrating acquisition targets. In particular, it bought smaller banks to supplement its organic growth throughout the 1970s and 80s and from 1989 to 1992, NCNB purchased over 200 regional, community, and thrift banks to further improve its market positions, then turn its core competencies to national banks with the goal of becoming the first nationwide banks. It is known as Nation Bank in 1990s. It purchased Barnett Bank, Bank South, Fleet Bank, LaSalle, Countrywide, Mortgage, and its name, Sake Bank of America. This example illustrates how Nation Bank rebranded as Bank of America since 1998, honed and deployed its core competencies of selecting, acquiring, and integrating other commercial banks, and dramatically grew in size and geographic scope to emerge as one of the leading banks in the United States. So, the next quadrant is the lower right, combines existing core competencies with new market opportunities. So, the manager must strategize about how to redeploy and recombine existing core competencies to compete in future markets. At the high of financial crisis in the fall of 2008, Bank of America bought the investment of Bank Merrill Lynch for $50 billion. Bank of America's corporate managers applied an existing competencies um, which is acquiring and integrating into a new market. The combined entity is now leveraging economies of scope through cross-selling. For example, consumer banking makes customers referral for investment bankers to follow up. So the third quadrant is the upper left combines new core competencies with existing market opportunities. So in this um, upper left quadrant, manager must come up with strategic initiative to build new core competencies to protect and extend the company's current market position. For example, in the early 1990s, um, Gatorade dominated the market for sport drink, a segment in which it had been original innovator. Some 25 years earlier, medical researcher at University of Loreda had created the drink to enhance the performance of the Gators, the university's football team, thus the name Gatorade, Shockley Band Camp, commercialized and marketed the drink and eventually sold it into Quaker Oats. PepsiCo brought Gatorade into its lineup of soft drinks when it acquired Quaker Oats in 2001. By comparison, 
Coca-Cola had existing core competencies in marketing, bottling, and distributing soft drinks, but had never attempted to compete in the sport drinks market. Over a 10 years R&D effort, Coca-Cola developed competencies in the development and marketing of its own sport drinks. Powerade, which launched in 1990, in 2012, Powerade held about 25% of the sports drink market, making it viable competitors to Gatorade, which still holds about 70% of the market. And the last quadrant, the upper right, combines new core competencies with new market opportunities. So, Hamel and Paralad called this combination mega opportunities, those that hold significant future growth opportunities. At the same time, it is likely the most challenging diversification strategy because it requires building new core competencies to create and compete in the future markets. For example, Salesforce.com is a company that employs this diversification strategy well. In the recent years, Salesforce experienced tremendous growth, the bulk of it coming from the firm's existing core competencies in delivering customers' relationship management or CRM software to its clients. In 2007, Salesforce recognized an emerged market for platform as a service offerings, which would enable clients to build their own software solutions that are accessed the same way as a Salesforce CRM. Seizing the opportunity, Salesforce developed a new competency in delivering software development and deployment tools that allowed its customers to either extend their existing CRM offerings or build completely new types of software. Today, Salesforce.com offering is one of the leading providers of platform as a service or past tools and services. Taken together, the core competence market matrix provide guidance to executive on how to diversify in order to achieve continued growth. So, once manager have a clear understanding of their firm's core competencies, they have four options to formulate corporate strategy. The first one is leverage existing core competencies to improve current market position. Second, build new core competencies to protect and extend current market position. Third, redeploy and recombine existing core competencies to compete in markets of the future. And the last, build new core competencies to create and compete in market of the future. So we have here the corporate diversification and firm performance. Corporate managers pursue diversification to gain and sustain competitive advantage. So we have here a level of diversification. The diversification performance relationship is a function of underlining type of diversification. A accumulate body of research indicates an inverted U-shape relationship between the type of diversification and overall firm performance. High and low level of diversification are generally associated with lower and overall performance while moderate levels of diversification are associated with higher firm performance. This implies that the companies that focus on a single business as well as a companies that pursue unrelated diversification often fail to achieve additional value creation. Firm that compete in a single markets could potentially benefit from economies of scope by leveraging their core competencies into adjacent markets. And the firm that pursue unrelated diversification are often unable to create additional value. 